Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, webinar uh, on the lessons from the Midlands Population Health Management Academy. I'm Fraser Batty and I was the programme director. I'm Lucy Hawkins and I was the programme manager. Um, we're going to talk uh, between ourselves for about half an hour um, or so. We'll leave time for Q&A at the end, um, although we're expecting slightly depleted uh, attendance at the webinar given events in the world. So what we're going to do is record the webinar, make it widely available to people um, on the website after, after the event. Um, we're also going to leave our contact details uh, up at the end of the session so that if people want to ask us questions outside of the webinar then of course they can uh, get in touch with us uh, then. Okay, we're going to begin really just by saying um, a little bit, providing a bit of description about the uh, about what the, the Midlands Academy um, actually was. It covered the NHS e and uh, region in the Midlands and the, the beginning of the programme, the origins of the programme, were with uh, seven STP and one of the ICS areas in the region, shown in the, uh, in the slide in, in blue. Um, and we began work with those STP areas, um, but then particularly as the Analyst Academy, and we'll say some more about that in a moment, expanded. We actually, we, we ended up expanding the program out to uh, cover the whole, cover the whole of the NHS e and I Midlands region. Um, it's important to note that it was a regional scale program. And again, it becomes a really important part of the story later on. And some of our reflections later will be very much about the nature of running a regional level program. So we thought it was important just to introduce that and give you a feel for the, for the geography. We also thought it was really important to give you a feel for the organisations commissioning the work and just to provide a couple of reflections really on the way that they work together and the way that they set the tone for the programme. So it was um, NHSC and I were the sort of lead commissioning body for the work, but they did work really closely in the region with colleagues from Public Health England and also crucially with the local government association to make sure that the local government angle um, was, was well covered within the programme. It's also right to say that the, that partnership was doing a lot of work within the region, engaging with the different STPs that would uh, take part in the programme to understand their needs, to understand what they wanted from the programme and to, and to kind of prepare the ground really for the, for the programme arriving. So I, th I thought it was also useful to give you a, give you a sense of the organisations involved in in commissioning the work. So to move on then to say a little bit about the, the, the consortium, the different organisations that, that came together to deliver the programme. Um, first of all, there was ourselves at the strategy unit. Um, for those of you that don't know, don't know the unit, we're an NHS organisation, we're part of Midlands and Lancashire CSU, and we're a team of just under 40 analysts and advisors. And fundamentally, we're all about the application of analysis, the application of insight to help improve population outcomes. And so we were really excited to lead the work and we were involved in all aspects of delivery. But we work really, really closely with a range of partner organisations that we brought together for the work. We work really closely with um, the Oxford Centre for Triple Value Healthcare and Muir Gray in particular there, who many of you will know. Um, brought particular expertise and, and length of expertise in relation to thinking in populations when it comes to the provision and the, the planning of care. With Alan uh, Margaret Mully from the Dartmouth Institute, who are um, leading specialists particularly in relation to shared decision making, and with colleagues from the University of Birmingham, particularly Robin Miller and Belinda Weir from the, the Health and Social Care Leadership Centre at the University, who brought expertise in relation to social care, local government, some of the elements of wider determinants, but also uh, crucially, and we'll say some more about it later, um, around systems leadership and, and working in systems. And then finally, we worked with our colleagues Milliman, who brought particular uh, technical expertise in, in relation to actuarial modelling. So that's just, that's just something of the organisations involved in the, uh, the provision of the work. Um, Lucy, would you say something about the, the way that we designed the academy and the way that we structured the work? Yeah, sure. Um, so the, the academy was structured into three work streams that you can see there. 
Um, we had the core teams um, who were multidisciplinary teams from each of the participating STPs who worked through the PHM project cycle um, by applying kind of what they were learning to a chosen topic area. Um, each SD, we asked each SDP to, to pick a population whose lives they wanted to improve um, and that meant that we saw a real range of projects um, from homelessness to frailty to children and young people's mental health and well-being to diabetes um, and social isolation as well. Um, the core teams went through six sessions so through those sessions we talked about kind of defining your population subgroup, understanding your population subgroup, creating a culture of stewardship so thinking about kind of how can we um, steward the resources that we have for the, for the long term, um, how do you engage your population and understand what matters to them and then how do you design and kind of evaluate the interventions learning from them. In parallel to the core team program, we then had the analyst work stream. Um, and so that again had six sessions, um, but focused more on the technical components required for PHM. Um, so with the analysts, we went through kind of understanding and um, doing needs assessments, impactability analysis, um, population segmentation, evaluation. Um, and we also did an introduction to actuarial modeling session with Milliman. And then supporting both of those work streams, we had um, sessions for leaders, we had webinars, we've had open events, although unfortunately quite a few of those have been cancelled due to the, the current epidemic, pandemic now. Um, and then analytical masterclasses as well, so delving even deeper into the kind of technical components with the analysts. That's great. There's, there's two things you've made me think going through that. Um, kind of taking me back to the beginning of the programme as well and what, kind of why we did what we did. One of the things you made me think is with the STP core teams we knew we knew that population health management was going to be a multidisciplinary undertaking we knew it was about bringing different insights together to, to look at the same population to think about how to improve their outcomes um, and we also knew that we got this sort of learning by doing thing hadn't we so we we didn't just want to you know, lecture people or you know provide classes for them we wanted to we wanted them to have a, a sort of practical hook to hang the concepts that we would cover on so so the core teams it was all about you know coming together learning by doing and the different STP areas taking responsibility for their own work in that sense so that was that was one thing cool. but we'll come back to some of the challenges around that later <laughs> yeah because that's not that's a non-trivial ask for, for people to get involved in that kind of thing the other thing was the analyst component of it and um, that becomes a really big part of the story later on we just had this sense that there was this that they're sort of fundamentally important to population health management. It's, you know, it's the origins, it's the lifeblood, it's the fuel, it's, you know, whatever, but you can't do it without good analysis. And yet our sense was, our early sense was that the analyst workforce was not well used, were not well positioned, were not well developed. Um, and again, they, we'll pick that up, but I just wanted to expose our, our early thinking um, yeah. at the outset. Um, just a quick plug, so everything um, from, that we've produced under the Academy is shared via the Midlands PHM Academy microsite with the website there and also via NHS Futures and the National PHM Academy as well um, and this webinar will go up on those sites as well after, after today. Um, the, one of the philosophies of the programme is that the NHS only needs to pay once so we wanted to share our learning, we wanted to share what we were producing um, as widely as possible so as Fraser said if, if you've got any questions or want to find out more after today our contact details will be at the end. Um, so please do get in touch. And we're, and we're in proper sharing mode. I mean, we've, I suppose one, one of, again, one of my reflections is that we've we produced more than I think we thought we would. And in a sense, we've, we've started to outgrow the website. So also if people go on there, maybe if you find it difficult to navigate, I and mean, we're going to do some work to structure it and, and sort of hand it over as a, as a product, as a legacy product. But if people have got particular questions about particular products or particular things on there, then please do please do get in touch. It really matters to us that we share this widely across the system. Um, so we wanted to spend the, the bulk of it, our time with you today talking about kind of what has actually happened and kind of our reflections on the programme, what we would do differently next time um, and kind of some reflections from the SDPs as well. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to move on to talk about for, for the next 10-15 minutes. Um, I'm going to start by sharing this infographic that we produced as part of the, the programme evaluation. Um, we wanted to share this because it just gives us a really good sense of the scale of the programme. So as Fraser said, we were working across 11 STPs, um, kind of eight who were coming through the whole programme, but the other three um, who were coming through the, the analyst component of it. Um, and those numbers are really reflected. When we pulled this together, we were quite excited about the number of people we'd actually had contact with. Um, including 125 people from the core team, over 300 analysts, 
Um, and also as well, what we were quite in, impressed by was the number of people coming to our analytics for leaders sessions, which were put on kind of only in the latter part of the programme. Um, as, as we said, everything's via, it's been shared by the, um, the Academy microsite, so do have a look at that. And we've already had a really great response to that as well. So, and that will stay up, even though we won't be maintaining it after the end of the programme, that will stay available for, for people to use. Um, I don't know if you had any reflections on Well, a, a couple of things, that, well, a few things really. One, one is that we got, I mean, as part of every session we did, we had this sort of slightly nerve-wracking moment where we asked people for fee anonymous feedback live and shared <laughs> as we went through. So we were very, very open about the way things were going. And we'll, again, we'll say a little bit more about why that was. So there's, we've picked out some bits here, haven't we? But there's a, there's a ton of much more detailed feedback. We'd be happy to share in the, anything that we did. The other thing you start to see on the infographic is, um, is a sense of the early outcomes emerging from the work. So the outcomes for the, for the programme and for the academy generally were about increasing people's engagement with population health management, enthusiasm for it, knowledge of it, skills in applying it, and ultimately, of course, capability to enact it. And you just get, you get some sense, don't you, in that it's very headline level, but you get some sense of that within the within the feedback that we've gathered there. We're going to later on in the year um, work with Public Health England to get um, an independent, more independent evaluation of the work done. We're going through a process of gathering much more evidence than we can present here and we'll share all of that. We're also really keen that there's some independence and, and sharing of evaluation from, uh, from, from the programme. So we're going to work with colleagues in Public Health England to get that done and shared as well. Yeah. And so that's sort of part of today's session is being open about everything. So we are going to be quite honest with you about what we think we could have done better as well. Um, before we do that, do you want to share a bit about our, <laughs> our approach when we started the programme? Yeah, because we found it in a cookbook. Yes. <laughs> and the, I mean, so our, our sense again on, on the way into the programme, we were very, we were very clear about our starting assumptions. We were very clear about um, the, the sort of outline propositions that we got. But we also were, it was, it, it was just obvious there was no cookbook, there's no blueprint, there's no, you know, seven step model to follow in terms of how you run a regional academy. So we were completely in, in design mode. We were designing as we were doing, we were finding things out as we were going. Um, we knew that we got expertise in our team. I mean, we're, you know, the strategy units, a team of very well regarded analysts. We know all, you know, we know a lot of that there is to know in terms of producing analysis and getting it shared, getting it used, getting into decision making. We'd also got, you know, some world leading experts in our team. So we weren't shy about the expertise we were bringing. And yet we had absolutely no sense at all that we got all the answers or that, you know, people in the region could come to us as empty vessels and that we, you know, our job was to kind of just fill them with, fill them with knowledge or information or, or bang them through a set process and that they would have, you know, then it would be done. They would have the, the results that we were after. So we had a very, very clear sense of designing whilst we were going and also designing with people whilst we were going. I think that's really, really important. And again, let, we'll perhaps say some more about that as we, as we progress through. Yeah, we knew when we were starting that we were learning kind of on the way in as well. We, we knew, yeah, as Fraser said, we knew that we had the, some of the knowledge, but actually we wanted to kind of hear a bit more about what was going on in the region. We acknowledging that actually we were going on this journey with the STPs that were participating. And, and all of these assumptions influenced the way we designed the sessions, the way that, that we adapted the sessions as we went along. Um, right at the start, we kind of, we had some sessions planned out, but we didn't know where, what was gonna happen with them, how they were gonna change. And actually most of the sessions ended up being very reactive to, to the, what happened at the session before. Um, the other kind of main assumption that we had and our, our sort of philosophical belief is that, that population health management is an approach it's not a tool that's on the shelf that you can just download and use. Um, it's, a, it's a way of doing things and a way of thinking. And so that, that really was something we really wanted to emphasize in what we were, we were covering as well in the sessions. And remember, I, mean, I think it's still true now, but it was certainly true a year ago. The, the general understanding of population health management was, was pretty low um, and also highly varied. So there was a job to do to, you know, kind of get people looking at the same thing, albeit a thing you know, and we use the definition out of the NHS England flat pack as to, to, to set the boundaries of population health management. But, it, but of course, the boundaries are still very broad within that. It's about the better use of data, intelligence, analytics. So it admits a, a whole breadth of discipline and approaches 
you know, it's not a dashboard, is it? It's not a tool. It's not something that's downloaded. It's, as you were saying, it's a set of approaches. Yeah. So we were feeling our way through. Do you want to yeah. say a little bit more about how we did it? <laughs> so this slide is meant to kind of articulate our, our approach to learning and development, how we designed our sessions. So the first, firstly, we wanted to do it collaboratively. So we wanted to partner with the STPs who were involved. We wanted to get feedback from them. We wanted to hear what they wanted, what they needed. Um, the second picture is meant to illustrate that it is experimental. So there, there were so some things that we tried that didn't work quite so well, but there are also things that, that we tried and actually did work really well. And, and kind of echoing that, that it was a learning process for everyone. So we, one of the things we advocated for during the programme was to fail fast. And we adopted that approach in our, in our development as well. And in how we design the programme, creating those opportunities. And just on that, I mean, that to me was why the feedback was so important. Yeah. So feedback in the sessions and as much as we could get, we got. And feedback outside of the sessions because we were working with particularly with the STP core teams to understand what it was that they were doing and you know how things were going and therefore what we would what we would modify as we went. The other thing I'll just say some quickly and then because it recurs later on is we worked so closely with Public Health England on the design of the analysts work and we, we worked really closely with them and we worked really closely through their networks um, and, and we learned an absolute stack by doing that so we were in the, we were sort of jointly in the lab with them but i think you know the general sense being that we were learning and designing with participants and with organizations as we went really really important yeah and then the final picture um on this slide is just a shameless plug for, for liberating structures if you haven't come across these yet and you're facilitating workshops do have a look at their website because it's it's really helpful um so these are kind of techniques that the aim, so they're often a bit of fun, but the aim of them is to, to make sure that everyone's voice is heard, that everyone in the room has equal chance to participate, that, that it's not just those with the loudest voice that are speaking. And, and that was a, a kind of key philosophy for the programme. We wanted to hear from everyone who was participating. We wanted to, to share the knowledge in the room. We wanted to create networks between STPs and kind of between us as well. Um, and also, yeah, encourage kind of that, that shared learning, that shared experience and, and continuing down that journey. Um, and it sounds, I mean, so, and this sounds sort of deeply prosaic, but it, but it's not. They're, they can be engaging, quite high energy, quite fun activities, can't they? And they can give you sometimes quite left field ways of looking at things. So I'm a complete convert. <laughs> the whole team is a strategy unit using all the time now. <laughs> um, the next slide we just wanted to share was a bit. So this kind of shows our sessions in action. Um, and just kind of the nature of, yeah, if, if you came, you did have to work. You couldn't just sit and listen. Um, you have some quite nice reflections on, on well, these I, don't, I mean, we wanted to give people a feel for what this, what the sessions looked like, what the academy in, in practice was like. And so we, we put these things up. And then, you know, just before the webinar, we were having a quick look through the slides. But the thing, the thing that really leapt out at me was we've spotted some stars in the region. So the approach that we took of trying to engage people do things with them as much as we possibly could. Um, enabled us to see some of the talent within the region, some of the skills within the region. Um, really came to the fore and people took on these, these particular roles within the programme in terms of them as participants. I'm not going to name any names, but I reckon I can see three or four people, maybe five, who would, who would fit what I would describe as a, a sort of emerging leader an analyst leader so people for whom population health management has perhaps changed the game a little bit in terms of their standing in the system the role that they might play and we certainly started to spot them as we went through the program so we've got some real stars in there um, if anyone wants to know the bottom left hand corner the, the line of a's if anyone wants to know what that is you'll have to ask us outside the webinar <laughs> or, or ask Mohammed. Um. Yeah, so just to add to that, it's, it's been a real privilege to work with the STPs that participate in the programme. And we've been so encouraged to see kind of individuals within, within each of the teams sort of taking things forward and, and really encouraged just to hear how it's kind of changed their thinking and, and how what they've been learning has, has influenced their practice and, and the way that they're going to lead in the future, which has been really exciting. And um, the next slide, um, we wanted to share our kind of reflections on, on the programme in terms of Kind of what what PHM means to people. Um, so this this is taken from one of the exercises we asked the teams to do in in the last core team session was to write a letter to their previous selves, um, explaining what they'd learned about PHM and um, but also kind of about the academy and kind of their their experience of going through it. Um, we've pulled out these quotes because we thought they quite nicely articulated kind of what we thought as well. And, and actually, we, 
it was quite encouraging that we weren't sort of miles off in terms of our reflections and actually that other people thought the same. Um, so yeah, so this is a really good opportunity to kind of hear what people have thought and kind of share the learning from that. Um, I do much to talk about. <laughs> well, it worked nicely as an exercise. I remember doing it. Um, it. It worked really well. People engaged very well with it. You know, sort of writing letters back to their former self felt sort of slightly artificial in a way, but it just worked yeah. really nicely. It wasn't intended this way, but it also gave us some evidence about outcomes. It gave us some sense as to what they as individuals had learned by going through the programme, their reflections on what they would recommend to other people. And I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't think there's much use in going through it step by step but you see some of the themes and the concepts coming through about you know cross cross team working multidisciplinary working the need to get the right culture in place about it not being a toolkit or something to just get cracking on about it not being a narrow thing on risk strat for example so a whole range of a really rich information came through from those letters that we've just picked out a few points yeah. here i think one of the the key things for me that I, I think i'm not sure that we've articulated there but that has that came out of the program is that that data is so essential for PHM, but not just quantitative data, also qualitative data, kind of knowledge as well, and that actually is that sharing of knowledge in a multidisciplinary team. Um, and that's something that people have really embraced, particularly on the analyst development program. They were they were keen, so we did a session on kind of logic models and qualitative information, and they were that was pro probably one of the better sessions because actually they were like, oh, this is great, this is new, this is exciting. Um, and the other thing is, it's about actually how we use that, I'm going to call it intelligence, in decision making and how, and how we build on, on the data that we're collecting, how we kind of turn it into a story. Um, and also engaging the population in that, I think that's something that we find quite challenging and, um, and I think is, is still an area for development, but definitely sort of seeing those light bulb moments for people who kind of, they were like, right, I've got, got this piece of data and I'm now going to combine it with this knowledge and actually I've spoken to so-and-so and they've they've added this and shone a bit of light on there and actually that's been really helpful. Um, and seeing that kind of sharing of knowledge within the teams but also between STPs, I remember somebody said to me actually oh I've just had a chat with Shropshire and it's just it's been great to know what they're going through and, um, and so getting that kind of networking across has been a, a key thing of the program and I think Hopefully something that will continue and we'll talk a bit about that later yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely we should come back to the cross-region, cross-STP working. There's two things you've made me think. One, one is just to emphasise Alan, Margaret, Molly from, from the Dartmouth. They, they kind of wouldn't let us go from this if we, if we didn't mention the importance of engaging with the population, yeah. engaging with the citizen to understand their needs. Because sometimes population health management is narrated as though it is an entirely data-driven, data as data in quantitative data-driven exercise and yet of course constantly throughout they were saying no 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 yeah, that's part of the story but it's not the whole story so to make sure you engage with that the other thing you made me think is the the set of skills required to work across disciplines to understand what analysis can do to understand different modes of analysis to think in populations one, one of my reflections was that all of those skills are present within public health yeah and and again some of the stars that we saw within the program are people who are, either have public health in their background or, or you know sort of public health professionals and which is fantastic at just taking this on and applying it really really fantastic so it's a shame that they're all now doing coronavirus yeah, well, otherwise <laughs> occupied now but um but just fantastically valuable and yeah not always valued in the way they should be i don't think so we're not, so we're not, I mean, in a sense, we, we're proud of the work we've done. We've got good results. It's done very well. We think there's a lot to share. Um, and maybe as a function of that, but maybe because we want to be good NHS citizens, I suppose, we, we also think it's important, I guess, to not do this as a sort of glossy King's Fund HSJ type, you know, wartless case study. Um, because there are some things that just didn't go as well or that, or that were really tricky as we were going through or that we could definitely have done better or we would do differently next time. So do you want to say what those things are? <laughs> do you want to say what those things are? I think we've, we've hopefully articulated them really well on this slide. Um, <laughs> so I think the first thing for us is that, yeah, so we believe in our approach and we believe in the fact that we'd gone in and, and knowing that the programme was going to be experimental and iterative and that we were going to be changing it as we went along. Um, however, that also came with challenges and, and I think we really struggled in sort of maintaining that flexibility when there's the pressure of time and the pressure of just needing to get things programmed in get things done um, and so it was always a kind of constant juggling kind of juggling act between between being flexible and adaptable to the needs of the stps and and then just getting things up and running and, and going i think one of the 
the main things we, we talked about, we often joke that when we started the programme, Frozen and I spent a lot of time driving around the Midlands just trying to meet people, which was great, but also we still don't think we spent enough time doing that. And, and, and there was kind of a, we, I think we had one meeting with each STP and then, then it was like, right, you need a team, you need to pick a project, you need to be kind of getting going. And, and um, so, yeah, so there, so there was a kind of probably a little bit, particularly at the start, a few teething issues and kind of understanding what the STPs really wanted and needed and, and us then having to kind of tweak things further down the line. Um, and then there was other things that actually we kind of kept flexible the whole way through and really struggled to kind of, to actually get programmed in and, and sort of trying to do things very last minute. And um, yeah, so there, so there were challenges around balancing the, the flexibility and adaptability. Yeah. And, and you're probably best placed to, because of, because of, because of driving the management of the program. And, and I mean, you know, at one point we were doing an event a week yeah. and we were co coordinating, you know, really quite significant levels of resources on our side and on the STP side. So you, certainly you were, you know, trying to sort of, you know, flight control a whole series of uh, things going on. And, and the best way of doing that, of course, is to just, is to get it programmed, get it written, get it done. And yeah, of course, as you're saying, that's in tension with the approach that we took, which was, what is it you guys want? How, how can we best meet your needs? How are we doing it? So that, that tension ran throughout. This, I mean, one of the things I think we could have done better is making a better link between the work that the core teams were doing and the work that the analysts were doing. So they were covering the same sorts of things and they were both going around the population health management cycle. And we were signposting each of the sessions and we were saying, you know, every core team should have a lead analyst on and yet I still don't feel like we made, we could have made more of that link and we could have done much more to promote that through. Just yeah, and, I, and again, in the logistical side of things, I think there were some challenges with the, the sequencing from that and definitely some of the feedback we got kind of echoed that. And actually it would have been great if we could have started the answer. So I think the core teams had their first session and we said, right, go away and do a needs assessment. And that was in July and then it wasn't until September that the analysts went through how to do a needs assessment. So we kind of built in our own kind of trip hazards as well as we went along. Um, we definitely did. Uh, one of the other bits of feedback um, that amused me no end was that the analysts thought that the core teams were getting better lunches. Yes, <laughs> which was not deliberate. There was not intention at all. <laughs> we just picked up venues were available, but yes, there was some. Yeah. And so I think somebody's feedback, which is probably my favourite, was just because you get breakfast on day one doesn't mean it'll happen again. And I didn't even <laughs> notice breakfast on day one. <laughs> Too busy organising. Yeah. So there were definitely things that we could always share more. There's definitely things that we would, were we to repeat this, were we to be advising others to take on this sort of programme, there are definitely things that we would share that we would do differently. So, you know, again, we're, we'll just hold the door open, I guess. So we next kind of want to talk about what was, what's next in the Midlands. So kind of coming out of the end of the academy, um, yeah, we think it's gone well. We, we know that people have enjoyed kind of meeting together as a, as a region. Um, so we thought we'd just spend a bit of time kind of talking about what's next. Um, the first one, unfortunately, was meant to be happening on Thursday, but is no longer happening because of coronavirus. But um, I'm going to let Fraser, Fraser plug this. Yeah, this is, um, we will, I mean, this is a long-standing agenda. So we'll, we've had to cancel an event, but we will definitely run it again. And we'll definitely keep going with this agenda. And you'll see a bit more at the end of the presentation as well, I think, where one of the avenues we think we can pursue this. But so I said at the start, one of our thoughts in entering the programme was that we knew analysts were really important to this agenda. And we also had a sense that um, they were not well used. And, you know, the sort of roadshow that we went on with the STPs where we were driving around the region meeting people. You know, we met plenty of board analysts, didn't we? It's fair to say. We met a lot of analysts who were saying, you know, my skills are going blunt. I'm not used very well. I'm, you know snowed under with dashboards and performance reporting and, and sort of and things from a technical perspective that are really quite tedious so they, mm -hmm. they didn't feel like they were using their skills as well as they could. And just to, to add to that, PHE did, so PHE has done a skills mapping exercise, so if you're not aware of it do look, look that up but, but that's effectively kind of corroborated that in, the, in their findings and I think they found an average of 100 to 150 analysts in each SDP um, majority spending their time performance reporting and so there is analytical capacity within the system we just need to think about how we can better use it. Totally, totally and the work was Gareth and Rachel that, from Public Health thing, they, I think they trialled it in the, in the region didn't they? Yeah. and then it's been rolled out nationally, it's, a, it's brilliant work, I advise everyone to have a look at it and it scales the problems in, yeah. in exactly the way we're describing. So we, so we ran the Analyst Academy jointly with Public Health England and I still remember opening, you know, standing up to 
sort of help open the first session um, and just describing some of these problems in the world. And then one analyst in particular sort of standing up at the back and kind of taking us on a bit, you know, just sort of saying, well, I've heard all this stuff before. What are we going to do? Can we get, can we do something? Can we get head of steam behind this agenda? And, and so worked with him and worked with others and got some other analysts involved. And we've actually now we've drafted, drafted an analyst manifesto up. So how would we make better use of analysts and the analytical workforce to make a success of PHN? And so we'll, we'll launch that in, in due course. And we're also, we've got this sort of analyst revolution idea. We're gonna, you know, we'll have an event called the analyst revolution. And we really, really want to do something to get this sort of head of steam behind this group of people who are incredibly talented, who have very rare skills and are being underused uh, within the system. So that is a huge part of the agenda uh, ongoing. And one of the other kind of key successes has been the response to that, I think. So, so we mentioned in the latter part of the year, we ran some analytics for leader sessions. Those were really well attended. People, people want to be using these people. Um, they want their analysts to be involved in decision making. So, that, so there is real potential here. And it's about that collaborative working and, and sharing knowledge like we talked about previously. No, that was, sorry, Doug, this, this is kind of a hobby horse now, isn't it? But one of the things that we heard consistently from analysts was it's, it's kind of all well and good you giving us more skills. It's all well and good you developing us. And yet you need to develop the people who are asking us questions, who are setting the demand aside for the work that we do. So we did toto a little bit, didn't we, with sort of analytical, everything you want to know about analysis, but we're afraid to ask for leaders. Ran two or three sessions for them and have got a really, really brilliant session together. So again, something we can take on. Um, the next thing, this, this slide doesn't articulate it very well, um, but it's that the, the Midlands Academy is continuing. So NHSE and I um, have recognised the value in the regional approach. And I think that the regional team and the Midlands regional team are doing an awful lot of work in thinking about how they can support STPs moving forward. Um, they're, they're developing an offer that kind of revolves around ICS development um, and sort of keeping the, the population health management community of practice going. Um, so kind of watch this space for, for that. And that I'm sure those of you that are involved at an STP level will have seen the emails kind of coming out about kind of what you need. And they're really trying to engage with, with the systems in the region to, to find out what works for them and, and what they need to do to, to continue that networking and that support that, that they think has been really valuable. Say a bit about the peer learning. For, you know, the value of regional working, giving the different STPs the opportunity to work together. Yeah, well, I, did, I, sort of, I just think that's, that's been one of the key things that's come out of the, the feedback that we've received. So in terms of after the sessions, STP feedback seemed to be that they loved hearing from other people in similar situations, loved learning from other, like, you're all different, but you're not that different. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, there's, if you're struggling with something, chances are somebody else has faced the same challenges and might have actually got a bit further down the line. And you can kind of share that knowledge. IG was in particular kind of a VSOL are really sort of trying to crack the IG issue. Um, so if you've got any queries about IG, go and talk to them. <laughs> and yeah, so so that so people are facing similar challenges and actually creating that regional network and sharing is um, is really valuable. We've got loads of examples of people handing over strategies, approaches, you know, experiences, all of those kinds of things. So people really entered into the spirit of that, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I guess the other, the other impression you probably get from the description that we've just given is, is of a very active um, regional tier in, in terms of NHS e and I in the Midlands. And I don't have experience of other regions. I've not really worked in any of the other regions particularly closely. But my sense is that the regional team have, have got a really good sense as to what their developmental remit could be and what they can do to help bring different STPs together in a, in a sort of developmental and learning Type capacity, so so I think that's really impressive. They're taking that on. And one one thing that's specific to the Midlands um, is the development of the decision support network. Um, do you want to talk a bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, it's again, it's I, I guess it's it's kind of a, an extension of the same point, really. That the the NHSCI uh, team in the Midlands um, just seem to have have got a really good sense of the way in which they can add value and the way in which they can help local efforts. Um, and the, the, the decision support unit network is, um, is, a, is a really good example of that. So, you know, there are different ways of thinking about it, but fundamentally the decision support units are going to be formed in each of the different STP areas in the region. And, and the different STPs will form their own and they will be doing it to address that problem that we were describing earlier of analysts and analytical talent being bogged down in too much day-to-day -day stuff 
of not being well networked and of not being close enough to decision makers. So in each STP area, we're giving them support and guidance to help come together to form their own decision support unit, to, to bring together some of their better analytical talent, to develop it, to network it, and to get it focused on big questions for the region, for, the, for their local area, big strategic questions and big decisions that they have um, in the local area. And then, you know, back to the point about regional added value. So, the, so the, doing it in the individual areas, you've learned something and you've gained something by doing that. Doing it at the regional scale, where you can come together, you can network the different decision support units, you can support them, you can share, go down to the detail of sharing analytical code, of evidence reviews, of particular analytical products. And because the strategy unit are helping with some of that regional infrastructure, you can provide some of the local analysts with access to some you know, some of the analytical expertise that we've got in our, not us. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not analysts. <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed, Stephen, you know, people like that. We can provide them with access to good analytical advice and guidance as well. So again, a really exciting development, a really important part of the legacy for the programme, um, brilliant part of the legacy for the programme. And just a sense that the Midlands is, I mean, we, we kind of would say this, wouldn't we? I mean, the Midlands, the Midlands. <laughs> being a bit of a region to watch in terms of the way it's pushing on to, to develop this agenda. Um, I think that's yeah. I think we've talked for long enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if if you do have any questions, if you wouldn't mind sort of putting them in the chat box, and then we can come on to those in it shortly. Um, just to share our contact details there, kind of while you're thinking of questions, I'll ask you to multitask now. Think of your questions and write down our contact details. Um, but thank you for listening so far, and yeah, happy to answer any questions.